Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Cooperman, president and founder of ConsumerLab.com, and I'm here to talk today about our recent tests of plant-based milks. ConsumerLab has been testing healthy foods and dietary supplements since 1999. This is our latest report, uh, and I'm going to tell you what we found in testing these products, both in the laboratory and taste testing them, really why you might want to consider plant-based milks, how they differ from regular milk and from each other, um, and one cautionary note as well when using plant-based milk. So first of all, you know, why might you consider uh, a plant-based milk rather than regular milk? And I do find regular milk, especially one or two percent uh, uh, milk, to be delicious. Um, these are not necessarily as tasty in my opinion. However, uh, what they don't have uh, are the calories uh, that you get from regular milk, which is about 120, 130 calories per cup. These have about 50 to 80 calories per cup, although these are mostly unsweetened. Uh, one, one exception being uh, an oat-based milk, Oatly, uh, uh, in which they've actually converted some of the carbohydrates from, uh, or starch from oats into sugar, a sugar called maltose. So it actually claims to have some added sugar, even though it's not technically added, but it does give it about as many calories as, as regular milk. Um, other reasons to consider uh, plant-based milks versus regular milk uh, is that the fat in these are all uh, basically polyunsaturated fats or unsaturated fats. They're not the saturated fats, which make up about 60% 60 60 of uh, the fat in whole milk. Um, so you're getting fewer calories, less saturated fat. Environmentally, they're, they're more friendly. Uh, cows produce a lot of methane, uh, causing, uh, contributing to global warming. Um, there's a lot less of that going on with these plant-based milks and they use less resources, although some of the almond milks do use a lot of water to produce almond, still not as much as you need to produce regular milk. In terms of what we found uh, testing these, um, the good news is that most of them contained what they claim in terms of their nutrients, their vitamins and minerals, and there are significant vitamins and minerals added to these. Um, however, one of the products contained only about 62% of the calcium that it claimed on its label, and it had a lot more of one of its vitamins. So the labeling was incorrect on one of these products. Again, the details are in our report on our site. Um, in terms of how they differ from one another, um, some of these contain protein. Um, they have added protein, such as from pea protein or soy protein. I think that's a good thing, and that actually is, gets them up to the same level of protein that's in regular milk, which is about seven or eight grams per cup. Um, other of these, particularly those made from um, uh, nuts, macadamia, cashew, um, uh, almond, they tend not to have that protein. So if you're looking for protein, uh, go for some of the products, you know, like a Ripple or a, um, uh, or a soy milk that has that added protein. Um, a cautionary note is they, they all also contain calcium, which is a, generally a good thing, and they contain about as much calcium as milk, which is about 300 to 350 milligrams per cup. Some of these have even more, say 450 milligrams per cup. Um, that's a big amount of uh, calcium to be getting from your, uh, from your drink, because these are counted as basically dietary supplements in terms of the uh, the, new, the added vitamins and minerals. So uh, you should not be getting more than a thousand milligrams of calcium from a supplement per day, which means you shouldn't be getting more than a thousand milligrams of calcium from these per day. And if they have 450 milligrams, that means you shouldn't drink more than two cups per day of those products. Otherwise, you increase your risk of, of uh, stroke um, or other cardiovascular disease. So be aware of that, that these do contain a lot of calcium um, not all of them, actually. This is a coconut milk. This one does not have calcium. Um, but in general, they do contain a lot of calcium. Uh, many of them also contain uh, B12, which is added. Regular milk, even though it doesn't say it on the label, actually has a little bit of B12. Um, uh, you don't really need a lot of B12. Some of these have, have that much or more uh, in terms of B12. Uh, most of them also have uh, vitamin D added, uh, just as you would get from regular milk where vitamin D is added. And they also contain other vitamins and minerals, um, often that you'd expect from, from regular milk. Um, uh, in terms of taste, 
they don't really live up to the same kind of creamy taste of like a one or two percent milk. Um, uh, but they, but some of them are kind of innocuous. Uh, they don't have a bad taste, particularly I like those made with pea protein or soy protein. Um, I found some of the um, uh, nut-based milks that taste a little bit artificial, um, but taste is really a very subjective thing, so um, it, it's really your call. But we also did taste, test all of these in coffees just to see if it whitened the coffee, added a creamy texture to the coffee, didn't create any kind of strange uh, uh, visual effects on the coffee. I wouldn't recommend a coconut milk in your coffee. It'll float right to the top. Um, but some of these did uh, go, go just fine in coffee, uh, which again allows you to cut down on the sugar kind of that you're putting in your coffee from regular milk. Um, uh, and that also goes for lac lactose-free milk, by the way, where the sugar has been converted, the lactose has been converted to glucose uh, or galactose. Uh, so you're still getting all those calories from sugar. Um, so if you have um, interested in more details in, uh, from our report, please see it. It's online at consumerlab.com. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them where you see this video. Again, this is Dr. Todd Cooperman with consumerlab.com, and thanks for your time.